promised you hot soft plastic action right from the word go. We're not going to disappoint, but before we move on to that, we're just going to run through the basics, teach you what you need to know about lures and rods and reels to make them work. Very, very important part of this type of fishing. Unlike bait fishing, we've basically got workhorses that work all day long with big heavy sinkers and big chunk of baits. It's all about finesse, it's all about feel, because when you're working a lure in the strike zone for snapper, you need to be able to feel where that lure is, you need to be in contact with it, you need to be able to know exactly what it's doing. It's called touch. You know? So the first thing we'll talk about is the rod and the reel and the lines that we use to present plastics to snapper. The most important thing in a snapper outfit is the rod. It is what catches the fish. The reel is just a line collector and a snapper brake, like a handbrake, and that's what a drag is. So the rod has to be absolutely perfect. It doesn't matter what brand you look at, if you look at the high end range of rods, you're going to get the best research, technology, materials available. Okay, compare it to a Formula One car. The high finesse, high, high finesse, high fidelity, lots of feel, but you've got to look after them a little bit. They're quite fragile when they're not fighting fish. When they're fighting fish, they're very, very tough. That's because of the technology. So what you want to look for is a rod of about seven foot long with a fast taper, high modulus graphite blank with a very strong butt section. In other words, this end here is the business end. That's what warms up your fish from the depths. This end, you want it to be fine with a lot of feel and a lot of twitch because that's what's presenting the lures and you're watching all day long and you're feeling those lures with that rod tip. So it's very important to get this right. This particular model, is uh, what they call a Starlo 6 mid-spin from the Tournament Pro range uh, and it's personally my favourite but there's plenty of rods out there that'll do a very good job just like this will but they're the important things to look for and just like the rod the more you spend uh, the better they get in reels too now this one holds about 250 metres of 15 pound braid you don't need it to do that sort of line capacity anything that will hold 100 to 150 meters will just about stop about just about stop every snapper in the business from one to ten kilos a couple of other things to really talk about with the outfit i suppose is just make sure that you're going to enjoy using it so cork grips are something i like because you're going to be holding it like a tradesman holds his tool all day long and you want to enjoy that experience and make sure that the guides are capable of running braid silicon carbide on this rod uh, just can't be marked by braid but some of the cheaper ones you know, if you, if you don't spend enough, you'll get guides that will get ripped up under, under load. Okay, so let's just talk at the lines here. This is called Unitica, okay? It's the latest generation in Super Dynamas or Super PE, okay? What makes it different to the older stuff is it's getting finer all the time and stronger all the time. It's getting rounder all the time. And the reason it gets rounder is because it's now got eight threads instead of four or six or, or two even in some brands. Okay, so it's hard wearing, super round, and that gives you great knots and gives you better line capacity. Basically, we attach it to a, to a mono wind-on leader. In this case, I've got Jinkai, 20 pound, standard clear. It's not fluorocarbon, not required. We basically connect that to that with the strongest possible connection known to man. It's called the Bimini Twist. The Bimini Twist goes into a double, which goes to a duck nose, leader knot, and that basically winds right through the guides and onto the reel. We have about two lengths, two rod lengths of the mono leader that allows you to have mono on the reel when the fish is both side. Okay, look, they're complex knots to tie, and you can spend 10 minutes telling you how to tie them. So the best thing you can do is teach yourself through any resource you can on how to tie these knots. They're worth it. So that, that's pretty much it. That's the ideal snapper outfit. You know, nothing really to it. But the more you spend, the better they get. And it can often mean the difference between hooking and then even landing a big snapper. And you don't want to, you don't want to miss an opportunity if that big fish comes along once in a lifetime. So anyway, so that's the nutshell, the, the nuts and bolts of the rods and reels. Let's just have a look at the lures. Okay, there are an absolute plethora of brands, soft plastic brands on the market at the moment. We're going to put that aside and talk about types of lures because there are basically four main categories that a soft plastic lure will fall into. Okay, the first and probably my favourite of all time plastic lure is what we call the stick bait. And like the name implies, or the flick bait, it's just basically a lifeless stick with a tail that has no inherent action when it's drawn through the water. The only action this gets is its natural wobbliness and the action I impart on it through the rod as it falls to the sea floor. Okay, so that's your stick bait or your flick bait. Okay, come in a variety of colours and sizes and with snapper, something about five inches like that is just absolutely ideal. Five to six inches. Okay, the other, the second type is the paddle tails. 
there are a range of paddle tails with different shaped heads, but effectively, if that tail paddles in the current, it's a paddle tail, okay? And that requires a fair bit of speed on the lure to make it wobble. And when it does that, it lets off a, a pulse in the water that a, that a predatory fish like a snapper can pick up on with its lateral line, and that will induce a strike every time. You put it in the strike zone, the snapper sees and feels that, he's going to nail it. So there's your paddle tails. Once again, same sort of size, five to six inches, absolutely perfect. Uh, yes, you can use bigger and you will get hits, but your hookup rate will be reduced. So I find five to six inches absolutely ideal. The third type is the good old prawn, the Warren Carter favourite. He loves them. And as you can see here, they represent the prawns that you would find, the everyday prawn you would find in an estuary anywhere around Australia. You've got your natural colours, your green prawns, your tiger prawns, and, and these bright colours, even though there's not many prawns like that unless they're cooked, they're ideal in sort of overcast or dirty water conditions. It just might help the fish see it when it's in the strike zone. And another favourite is the white, or the Pacific pearl in this colour, in this case. So there you go, so there's the third type. The fourth type is the good old fashioned wriggle tail, okay? The wriggle tail lures, or the, or the wrigglers, as squidgies call them, do exactly that. That tail is more like a little oscillating worm. And when that's in the strike zone, you don't, it doesn't need a lot of speed on it to actually make it wiggle, so you can draw it very slowly across the bottom. The snapper sees that, they absolutely inhale them. They love them. All right, once again, size is in that 140, 150 mil range. And in this case, it's a coral pink, and that colour has been dynamite in Paul Phillip the last two seasons. Probably my favourite lure. But you've got to vary the colours on any given day, because you never know what's going to work. So if there's two of us, or even three of us in the boat, all start off with different colours until stomach starts getting hits, and then slowly but surely move towards that colour and style. So there you go, they're the four main types of lures, but these are pretty useless unless you get them into the strike zone. There's only one way to do that, and that's with a jig head. So now let's look at the jig heads. It pays to have a huge range for every scenario, and there I have exactly that. There's a combination of jig head and hook size there for just about every application on snapper, from super massive light jig heads to super massive hooks with big heavy heads for deep water, and even very light resin heads for presenting in ultra shallow water in very calm conditions and very very effective on prawns and flick baits that require the bait to fall very slow to the bottom. Basically there's two main types in my collection. I use the, the squidgy jig heads which are the fish size shaped heads and I also love the Gamakatsu salty darters. Okay, both very very uh, good jig heads, very very strong hooks. You've got VMC and Gamakatsu side by side there together and they both catch fish. So there you go, full collection. Now let's show you how to put a lure on a jig head. Okay. Today I'm going to use the lemon chicken out here in Western Port, the 145mm flick bait. Awesome little lure, that one. And I'm going to use the number 50 squidgy fish head, and that's a resin head. It's actually quite light. We're going to fish quite shallow today, and I don't need the big jig head. Once the current gets going, I'll put the jig head bigger jig heads on. First thing I do is I pre-measure the length on that lure and it's about there. So we know it's got to come out about there at the back of that lure. And obviously that's the back because that's the top of the tail. But that jig head's not going to look quite right on this because it's a very narrow end and that's quite a fat end. So what I'm going to do is just going to nip it back to about there and as you can see that is now going to sit beautifully on there. So now we pre-measure it again, it's going to come out about there. And the important thing with any soft plastic, any brand, is you must put the hook on dead centre down the axis of symmetry. We talk about it with baits, it's no different with soft plastics. You get it right down and you get it coming fair and square right at the back of the lure, at the centre of the back like that, and then push it up onto the lure like that. And there you have it. Perfectly straight. The jig head looks, the head looks like it belongs to that lure. Wiggles round, and that's as simple as that. So it doesn't matter what the lure is, you must keep it in the axis of symmetry right down the central line of that lure, and it'll work best. It won't swim to the side, it won't hook off to the left or the right, it'll draw true through the water. And that's as simple as that. We are ready to go and target snapper on plastics. So now that I've imparted what I know about soft plastics, which isn't a lot, let's just show you what they're capable of. 
So fasten your seatbelts and get ready for some of the hottest soft plastics fishing you're ever going to see on Snapper. This even blew us away. Check it out. Got him back, Winger. Yeah. See if I can get one soon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You're on two, eh? Well done, Carl. Yeah. Hey, Tanner's on, mate. That will go to the back here. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just move. I'll move him behind Charlie, mate. You do that. Yeah, That's right. a good fish, this one. Save us that. Bit of stick there, Carter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got some stick on him, too. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, winger, Hello, I'm on, too. That's a good fish, too. On the, on the lemon chicken yeah, switch, yeah, mate. Slow, mate. Mate, this fish is it. still going. Yeah, Mulloway. Could be. Captain's called it for a Mulloway. Has he? Yeah. Nah, I'm calling for a red. Nah, no, they don't. They do seem to run big boys down here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come this is plastic fishing at its best. The skipper made a move of about 50, 100 metres. Said so we're not quite right. The wind's pushed us off the mark. And we're fishing structure. And Fuzz. About 50 metres off the wreck. And his mate Big Ash. She's is a big fish. I can't even get it up, mate. Nah, mine's a good fish too, mate. Yeah, it's double hook up of, of, of big reds, buddy. Could be. Hmm. <laughs> I'm fishing a long way away. I haven't even had a game in here. Put his head down on that side. He's taken off, isn't he? Oh, it's a big fish. I've got rods. Oh. There we go. Charlie, can you our cameraman as we pulled us his winger? There's a big fish on the sounder. So I cast straight onto the boat. Why don't one flying out the back? I hooked that first on the when it was still dropping down to the bottom, mate, eh? Yeah, yeah. Got within close to the bottom, though. And then about 10 seconds later, I got on. Mine hasn't given me any serious stick like yours did. Oh, mate, this thing's really gone. Just big and heavy. You know the bigger fish, they carry on less and they just give you more dog under the boat quite, don't they? Yeah. Fuzz, mate. Big Ash. You guys are legends. We met the skipper through a guy called Ash Smith. He posted some pictures on Fishnet of some big red snapper caught on plastics. So we I rang him, said we've got to get over there. A week later, we picked a, a weather window. Oh, mate, what the size of this fish? Yeah, let's not wrap them around, mate. Pick, too, yeah, picked a weather window. And we've driven straight from midnight. Oh, have a double big red beside oh the boat. Oh <laughs> Look at this one. Look at mine, Carter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be cheeky to get a broken. <laughs> it's not going to give up. Yeah, give it. Gotta get that in too. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, baby! The money shot. <laughs> <laughs> I can pay the environment. Oh. Tell you what, yeah, Star and Bushy, we love ya. <laughs> the squidgy's rule, mate. Have a look at this brood of mine. Oh. That's a big boy, isn't he? That's a big fish. Get him up, was I? Oh. <laughs> 
That is sensational. That. This was more dogged. That took off harder. Took off harder. But the bigger fish was more dogged. Yeah. Wasn't he? He was. That's a big fish. Now that's over seven and a half kilos that fish. That's heavy. That's got some serious yeah. weight. I reckon in, mate. yours has probably got about 800 grams on it. Well, fish. let's quickly dispatch them onto the scales, onto the brag mat, and get them back out home. Let's do it quick. Let's get the lures out. Let's go. 84 centimetres, what's yours, was it? 84 centimetres. 84 centimetres, but yours has got a bit of beef on it, mate. All right, let's get the scales going. Scales? All right, just get them in the water, mate. All right, let's just get them going. Look, what do you reckon he is, Carter? Oh, okay. 7.8. 7.8 kilos, yeah. yeah. Yes, beautiful kick. Let's give him a swim. Yep. Give him a swim. Oh. <laughs> One goal. Well done. <laughs> Nothing else to say. Well done, mate. Well done. That was a great hookup. I think we've mission accomplished. Yeah. Just goes to show you what plastics can do. Yep. You know? I have fished all season outside of Western Port with plastics, and that is the piece of resistance. And the good news is, mate, we've got about uh, 24 hours left here. Oh, mate, let's get into it. And, 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 and Fuzz reckons that we haven't even hit happy hour yet. The big fish haven't even started. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great big heavy rod it's a little stellar 2500, mate. Here he comes. Nice Got coloured and nice fish. How good's that water? That is a ripper. Well, Let's try and nice steer him in here, mate. Just give me one second there. There you go. Should be, oh, oh, oh. be yours. There we go, mate. There you go. That's you, mate. There that you is a big fish. That, that is a nice fish. fish. Again, I've just been a bit conservative on the fibre. That's all right, <laughs> yeah, boss. Yeah, no, that's Thank all you right. very much. Quality work there. He's green. Saratoos, a little bit of S factor. Job done. He's, uh, he's got a fair bit of it. Have a look at that for a fish. That soft plastic, beautiful. guys. Nice snapper by anyone's language. Bait or soft plastic. Well done, Carl. For soft plastic, that's an awesome fish. Tanner. I'm oh, very happy, mate. Fit, fit, fit my head around. I think big, you know. That's awesome, mate. Love it. You've done well, Skipper. Quality work. Thanks, Fuzzle. Chartreuse. Yes, we love it. We love it. Hey, the guy said that we'd be hooked up within 10 minutes. Yeah, that was right. far wrong, was yeah. he? No, it was six. It took uh, me six minutes to get a bait there. Yeah. You, you're a bit <laughs> slow uh, baiting up. That was a problem. What we're going to do is we're just going to measure it. And we can just see where the back of the hook is there. It's going to come out through that groove there and in the centre. We just squeeze her on like so. Look at that. Like a bought one. <laughs> just like another lolly. You got that uh, alpha male grab He's in the hot spot too. Oh. <laughs> I've got to get you one of those. Oh. 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 Right. I've got to get you one of those prawns. He'll be back. <laughs> I got no manners. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might be his fat sister. Oh, took it again. Just lay up some slack and hopefully you'll slam it as it's falling down again. Quite often that can be competitive. Here we go, here we go, watch. On the drop, mate. There's a finger there, one. You've got a bit of a cut, mate. Yeah. Well, that's too exciting. You're not worried. <laughs> Don't know where it's coming What's from. That? There's a rag on, yeah. There's a rag there if you want, mate. Just there for me. Uh, too busy? Too busy? You clean up later. Oh, I don't like blood everywhere. Candy passes out. See, I don't want that bait. It's not coming back in too long, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not like shallow fishing. You've pretty got to hang it. Oh, 
Was this was the 7.6s with the smaller jig head and the white work, as opposed to the heavy black and the pink? So I'm doing a change. Not heavy. The smaller jig head lets your boat flutter down a lot slower, gives it more air time, so to speak. That's right, Ringer. That's right. And air time lets them see it, gives them time to hit it. What size jig head you got on, mate? I've uh, got an ounce. Hang on, Pose. Hang on, we're hooked up. Yeah, hooked up. And actually, the, the lure was under the anchor. It was back under the anchor yeah. when I hooked up. All the mud and that, probably, you know, the old sand whiting trick. Yeah. As a kid, skin diving in Port Phillip Bay, you get the flippers near the sand on the bottom and make a big sand cloud. All the mullet come in and have a look. Matt Seeney reckons it does the same thing with snapper when you pull your anchor up. And we just did that then, and I actually had the lure sitting right under the anchor when we were pulling it up. Sure enough, it's got hurt. I don't know about you, bikes, but the more fish I catch, the tougher my left arm gets. It's a joke, David. It's a tough man. It's a joke, David. We're what you call, call a mankind. It's a joke, David, we won't say it. Got me, Dave. Am I going to be able to manage these things tomorrow on that outfit or what? Because they're going to pull me in the water. This is not a light outfit. This is a uh, Starlow, stick, mid, Starlow Sticks Tournament Mid Spin. It's a tough little piece of, piece of work, this one, I tell you. It's got the finesse of a brim rod, really. The power of a Western Port Snapper outfit. And I need it with these fish, I tell you. Go and Mr. Tannehill is in like wings. Can have a look, Charlie. Mate, these stick baits are deadly. I've I've only got Mr. Tim. Shad's aren't bad either, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the They're the same colour though, you know. Is that they both like greens? Yeah, the greens working, isn't it? Both like greens. Bit of chartreuse. Come and join me, Tanner. Yeah, nice fish here too, mate. Just quietly. <laughs> How good is this? Sun on the water. It's meant to be, mate. It was just meant to be for us. We, we seem to, every time you and me and I get together, something yeah. happens for the camera, yeah. doesn't it? Actually, last time you and I fished these waters, Mr. Carter, we did well too. Yeah. Uh, this is just awesome on the plastics, mate. Oh, this is a big fish. Got colour? <laughs> <laughs> Big winger? For winger to say that's a big oh, fish, it's got to be a big fish. Big bears and the strain club and salmon. Yeah. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh, that is happy awesome. Hour. Yeah. Happy oh. hour. That is awesome. That's a big fish, mate. Eight and a half. Sorry, well, skip oh, The decky big ooh. ash, you said he's eight and a half. Us. We're getting closer to 20 pounds, and apparently we haven't even got happy air yet. I can't. I can't wait to see what this happy air is. Here's you blokes. You just got it too good. You could spend 20 years in Port Phillip and Melbourne not uh, catch that fish. There you go. Have a look at that in the water. Uh, <laughs> still got the, you can just see the jig head sticking out of his mouth. And he's got the chartreuse shad right down the gullet. Have a look at that. How good does that look? I just want to jump in the water and give it a cuddle. Oh mate, that's just an awesome sight. Oh, not bad, Tanner. You just got, you got to love it, don't you? Oh, oh look at that. Tailspin. Thank you very much, oh, Manny. Goodness, Hold them up together. Go, yeah, that is a great double. We've got to get a photo on That's our the phone. Only double, mate. On the phone, Sam. Yeah. yeah. Bert Bright, Bright was yeah. still alive, mate. He'd be saying that's the daily double. That's a fair quinella. It's rain fish. Yeah. <laughs> 
Alright, let's have a look at these boys. Now this is what you're talking about on the way down in the car? Oh. Yeah, mate. I'm going to have to get that tail out, mate. Have a look at it. Have a look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> Top weight in the first and the second leg. And we're drifting now. There's no anchor down. That's just fantastic. Watch that snapper on my mouth. I'll tell you what, time to get some photos, boys. I can yeah. just see the end of the flick bait sticking out of his gob there. Have a look, have a close up of that jig head. That was new only about two two casts ago, mate. Have a look at the jig head. It's absolutely no. decimated. Just gone. Those oh. teeth have just crushed it. And well, mate, I put a heavier head on because we started drifting and it's done the job for me, so everything's good. All right, let's get some photos, right. boys. Do you want to have a little way there? Or... Now I really love that 90 mil stealth prawn. You love it, there. Oh mate, just. Well, I love yeah. these lemon chicken flick baits. These are what I smashed the kingfish on with Rainer and Paul Phillip a couple of years ago. So once you have a bit of confidence about a lure, you don't want putting it on. Here we go. It's a little bit bigger than five, mate. It's a good fish. You got net over here, guys? Yeah, man. Oh, wow. What a beautiful fish. Look at that solid hookup. He's just come and smack that lemon chicken. Hardcore. Look at the teeth. That tells you that these fish are predatory fish. They're razor sharp, conical teeth. Like, like humans, they don't regenerate. So you can actually tell a lot about a snapper's tooth. If they're sharp at this size, he spent most of his life not crushing shells but chasing bait fish. And that is why they are so susceptible to take them, catching them on lures. And how's his teeth look, mate? Razor sharp, mate. I'll give you a dollar cash, fit income first, but cash, you put your finger in there. Nah, mate. We've got a checkbook in your bag. I've done it once before, and it's not much fun. <laughs> no, we're getting him going, he's, we're not going to wait. him back in. He's, he's a six kilo fish. We'll do the submarine here. Yep. And away he goes. Beautiful. Well done, Fuzz. Good release. See that stuff? Uh -oh. <laughs> Naughty. And that stuff. <laughs> uh, look at the fish got away though. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Double hook up. Double hook up. Should we watch Double that? Here was the sound of that. Nothing like the sound of braid and the... On a walk. Warm summer's night. Mate, lemon chicken dropped straight to the bottom. I didn't even jig it. Just it said good night. Well, I think what we've experienced today is that there's all different ways that you will actually get a hookup. You have to be prepared to try everything. But the key feature is in the strike zone. Yeah. Right, and depending on the type of the lure, work it the appropriate way. With the chick, with the flick bait, we're making the, the lure dance and move. Um, in this particular case, it was just still falling to the bottom, just twitching. But as it falls, I actually was twitching the lure, mate, you know? Yeah, I think but then, uh, yeah, the shads just sort of do a lift a lift off the bottom and the tail wiggles. Let it fall down again. There you go, Smithy's just hooked up around the back of the boat, so happy hour might be beginning here. No, this happy hour. Talking about this happy hour, I think it's been all day this happy yeah. hour. <laughs> well, this is just really, really I, happy. Hey, Warren, are you happy? <laughs> Always happy, mate, when yeah. I've got a bent rod. Um, okay. <laughs> we got a monster, though. Anyone got a monster? Oh, Smithy, little fella. I think this is my best fish of the day. I've hit it hard. Bonnie Doon. These are in the right. Colour there, Warren. Anchor rope. Yeah, another anchor rope. You going to dance it? Right, so, Warren's going to play dance. Dancing on the deck. I'm going to fish off the anchor rope. But if there's one man in fishing that can get a fish off an anchor, and you can vouch for a tenner, it's cool. It's uh, Carter. Look at the colour. Oh, it's just a good fighter. It's no bigger than the others, is it? No, just that. Uh, Still a great fish. Yeah. Nice fish. Easy size seven to eight. You're again. getting you're getting you're getting pretty blase when you're talking about <laughs> seven and eight kilo fish on soft yep. plastics like yep. that, mate. Get away.
Well, he got that fish. Have a yeah, look at that anchor. fish. That's off the anchor. You're the king of that Carter, aren't you? I can't. Warren? That rod's a ripper, isn't it? I love it. I, I, I had one of them on a hot kingy session, mate. And I loved it. Dogged fish. Mm. Chartreuse shad hanging out of his mouth. He's got nothing left, he's spent. Leaving the water, eh? Just pulling yeah. the lure out while it's down there. And this is the beauty of the environment at Tenor, isn't it? Yep. No tangles, no hassles. Gone. Well done. And he was spent when he came up too. He had nothing left. Hey, he was spent. And if we had to muck around with a net, with a net with, with the knots, would have been you know, a minute longer out of the water yep. and a mess. No, the environment's good. Having can't fun, beat, boys? Can't beat the environment, net. Mate, we are having a ball. You're not taking that one Gotta got get this little fella. <laughs> got hey, Charlie, I've got words for you. I want to get you smoked. That little touch then. Did you? Yeah. That was mean, man. Don't worry. Smoke, yeah. Well, I get it tonight. I'll get one tomorrow. <laughs> Chase it like a like a true pelagic would. How far off the bottom? Halfway. And halfway or anything. We've got now. No, when they're actually first Yeah. No, I thought, you know, there's probably a snapper watching it. Because they're down there, we, we know they're there. I jig it along the bottom. And thought I'll do a medium pace retrieve, just a, a flat roll, just a flat speed retrieve. And sure enough, he didn't like the idea of that good pace, he's trying to get away from him. And We've got these boats around us, they're all fishing bait, and they're all catching pinkies. I was just saying the fuzzle, that these bigger fish seem to be predatory, chasing large, what they think are live fish, but as we know, they're squidgies. But also, luckily for them, we're not greedy people. And we're going to be putting a lot of them back today. We're going to get a feed too, but these big prime breeders are going back. Any of those pinkies are coming home. Village feast this time. Good fish, guys. You watch your call, winger. Six, six to seven kilos. Now you get to see the Starlo sticks mid spin. You're playing with others, drifting past. Now, Mind you. One of the boats we've actually got alongside us is a pro. With hand lines, 500 pound hand lines, he's just watching it. Must be killing him. <laughs> $50 note goes back in the drink every time yeah. we release it. Every time we release it, it's a $50 <laughs> note going back, that's right. But you know what? Wouldn't have been any other way. But you can see the, the Starless sticks just got heaps of oomph. Just heaps of oomph. I mean, just 10 years ago, you'd call this a brim rod. But the technology's come that far with the graphites. They're making them that strong and that rigid that this is now becoming a 15 kilo outfit. It's just all class. The drag is super smooth. That's a, a big fish. Oh yeah. Who have a chin on that, Carter? <laughs> He's got a big jaw on him. 
You wouldn't want to put your hand in that mouth, would you? He'd be, he'd be seven kilos. Oh, that's a big fish. Well done, will you? That's a good one. Mate, that is just sensational. I'm getting out to work. It's probably about six kilos, that fish. Six and a half, what do you reckon, will you? Spot on, mate. See you later, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Yep. What's that? What's that one on, mate? Flick bait, mate. Did you put any X factor on that? Uh, sure did. Yeah. How did uh, S factor come into play? Oh uh, well, the boys at Squidgy and Dunford Shimano decided that we needed to do develop something that would be suitable for Australian conditions and Australian fish. So we commissioned a marine uh, scientist, Ben Diggles, and we had Ben on the team for 18 months, working up there at Bribey Island, where we had a number of pens with strange species in them. Bass, Brim, Snapper, Barramundi, and Mulloway, yep. amongst others. And we tried all these different concoctions to try and attract the fish. And uh, that testing went on for nearly 18 months before we finally worked on a system that we were happy with. And we ended up calling that concoction S Factor. So we've only just released it onto the market in the. Oh, there goes the fish. Doesn't uh, matter. We only just released it onto the market a couple of months ago. And already we've had an, numerous amounts of wins yeah. in the uh, brim scene, as you know. Yeah. And the guys have been using the S Factor. And I don't know what happened there, but I, I lost that fish. So That's fishing. I've got no doubt that many people are going to enjoy using S Factor. It's just like a paste, isn't it, really? It's what just is... like a paste. You just place it onto the. We've got a packet here, mate. Onto the bait. So I'll just show you how to do it here. So it comes just, every just, every packet of pro pro every, range. Every packet of pro range has that satchel on it. You just snip the corner like we have, and just paste it on the bait. You don't need to use copious amounts. Just a small amount will do the job, and just spread it down the bait. There's no magic science to it. I tend to put more on around the hook, around yeah. the head, but a lot of people do go the whole bait. That's it. That'll last five, six, ten, maybe even fifteen casts, depending on the water you're in, the depth you're fishing, and the tidal flow you've got. Just that friction on the bait. Well, I noticed this morning, mate, when it was a bit quieter and we were having trouble getting fish, the minute we put that on, we got that first hook up. So, I, I reckon it's pretty good too. Yeah, there's no doubt when the fish are going crazy, you probably don't need to use it as much, the action of the lure. It's a very important point I must make, that all the squidgies that are in the pro range that do have the S-Factor, they must work as a lure first, before they go in the range. It can't just be a factor that we're relying on the S-Factor to catch fish. Yeah. The lure has to work itself first, before Bushy and Starlow will allow it to be in the range, so. Well, I think we've uh, certainly um, proved that in the last day, you know. Yesterday we didn't start off with S Factor and the fish were just slamming the lures. So the lures work. Yeah, the lures work. And when we've had it today where the fish haven't been quite as active, we've had more trouble getting the fish, that's when the S Factor has definitely been a factor. Yeah. It's made the difference, hasn't it? It's made the difference. Yeah. Very right. happy with uh, what's transpired over the last couple of days, I can tell you now. Yeah, well, a very good explanation of what S Factor is, mate. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Get another fish, will you? How was that, Charlie? That was great. <laughs> and it's still great. I just dropped it straight on. I saw him on the sounder and I just dropped it straight on the boat. And you just saw... <laughs> out of hooking. There's so, many, there's so many techniques that work. But one of the most... One of my favourites is just the drop down. Just drop it on them. They see it coming down, they hit it before they hit the deck. Wouldn't it be good if Brim grew this big in rivers? <laughs> 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 
Yeah. You want up a spray yeah. painted silver, take it into the river. Mate, with a boom this size, you wouldn't have a live well big enough to put them in. No, you'd have a live boat, live well boat. You tow behind your main boat, and you've got to throw them in there, and they swim around in the hull. You can make up a floating pen. Yeah, you <laughs> It's another cracker. It's a cracker again. Wouldn't crack me a zero, mate? Yeah, no worries. I'm parched. I'm a little bit parched from all the sweat and work. Carter's on too. Come on, buddy. Yeah? Is this the 10? I don't know, mate. <laughs> it just goes so hard, though, man. Cheers. That's a good fish. Nothing like the sound of screaming braid, is there? Oh, mate. Down there, so what do you think of the Unitika Brave, Kat, Katsuki? Mate, I'm very impressed with it. The knot strength is very, very good. There's no fray, it stays smooth and round, doesn't it? It does. just want to move it a little bit, mate. Yeah. 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 What are your two chefs here for? Um, a modified shad fluoro green. Okay. Can yep. I cut the belly off them? Yep. I've got that slick green one again. Same shape as the slick, yep. with a paddle tail. With a paddle tail, yep. When it's... they drop down, they wriggle, whereas yours will switch. That's a cracker. <laughs> well, that, that, that's the biggest fish in the trip, I reckon. It's a good fish. Oh. It's going to be a big fish yours too, mate. Carl <laughs> Warren, what are you doing, mate? Hey, I'm pumping him. I'm hungry. The steak's waiting. <laughs> we missed out yesterday on the steak. Yeah. Got in a bit late. <laughs> Only because we're having too much fun. Colour yet, mate? Uh, yeah. I can't wait to see Warren's fish. This is, um, look at that. He is giving it to it. Can Charlie come in between us and have a yep. beautiful thing come up, mate? Then you can pan back to water. Coming up from the depths. Big red, Spencer Golf style. Have a look at this. That is a cracker. Yeah. A cracking fish. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Well done. Oh, well done. There's some twin big puppies. Yeah. That fish of yours is a good fish, Carter. He's a good fish. That's getting up near, you know, in the eights. That's <sighs> the old green one. 
It's giving me a bit of inspiration to put some big yards in on Western Port, Port Phillip with these. Because obviously it can be done. It's just over there when the fish average is a lot smaller. It's just going to require a lot of time and effort. But the reward is there for those who persist. And once upon a time I dreamed of catching a 20 pound snapper anyway and I've done that. Now I'm dreaming about doing it again on a plastic. Uh, That's right Winger, I'm still yet to do it. But we're getting closer and closer to that benchmark. Oh, we gave a kiss, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Yeah, she made the noise, didn't it? Mm -hmm. it okay, let's get them going. Let's not, let's not do them any harm. A fair sized fish. Not a cracker. <laughs> it, it seems like such a light little rod, but you got some power with it, haven't you? Yeah. I just need the rest yeah, it feels heavy. I dare say we're going to have some fun viewing in the pub tonight. Yeah. <laughs> See that coloured braid's good when you're fishing deep water. Yeah. And actually, once you know your depth, yeah. you know where the bottom is. Yeah. You know where your lure exactly is. Yeah. And it's that last 10 metres, or that last 8 metres, as that's free falling is when the fish is going to nail that lure. Yeah. And what's your, what's your colour going? Your blue? Oh, well, in this case it was blue. You know, where, you yeah. know the blue is your... Yeah. yeah. Every 5 metres is a different colour on the line. Yep. So, yeah. the fifth colour in at 25 metres, yeah. which is so blue. Five, five different colours yeah. at 5 metres. Yeah. What are, we got a kilo rates, maybe? Oh, yeah, six, seven. Yeah. Uh, Just gonna get down on it. Now the deckies out doing me. <laughs> Just get that lure to come back. <laughs> <laughs> He just got coached by the master though, Charles. Big Ash? Not bad. What is he, mate? Do you like those squiddy uh, books? About six, six and a half, I suppose. Yeah, I reckon he's spot on, mate. Got the tips of the maestro. Done well. Very, very simple. The old yes. slick green did the job again. What's your favourite plastic now, mate? Well, I still prefer the prawn, the stealth prawn, 90 mil. But in the last 24 hours, we've chucked everything and they've taken the lot. From shads, to the flick baits, to the stealth prawn. Equally as good. But my favourite's the prawn. This is... Unbelievable. The tri triple hook up from heaven. <laughs> and I've got the winger McFlasher on here. Oh, where does the big one go? <laughs> You've got Mary Dick. Here we go. We're gonna be wrapped. We're gonna be wrapped. We're gonna be wrapped. Good fish, Carter? Yeah, it's a good fish this one. You wanna get in there? Yeah. Dosey dough, mate, dosey dough. Over there. I'll keep the braid away from you bikes just for a minute. I mean the mono, away from those braid lines. Oh dear. I've got I've actually put some bait on. Oh, you're on bait? Yeah, on the wing of McFlasher. And no hook up, Wink. Well, you are hooked up? No, I'm hooked up, mate. Yep. I just don't want to bring the fish anywhere near the braided line. <laughs> oh, you nearly had him, Tanner. Tanner's going for the four way. Back, mate. I had it. Nearly had the quadrilla. No, mate, let's go because I feel Tanner's mind on me. Do me like cotton. A bit of dancing going on here, boys. The killer tomato. <laughs> hey? The killer tomato. <laughs> Have a look at the killer tomato work. Colin Tannehill has put a killer tomato on for me. He said, Charlie, give this a go. I've already been on this fish to put this in perspective for about eight minutes, right? It's about right, Colin. These are good fish. We've got a four minutes of tape, so we're... Tell you what, I reckon all three of these fish are going to come up at the same time. And we have a net ready. I've got a net ready here. I've got Wing a bumper on. Absolute brute. Has anyone got 10 kilos? Yeah. Uh, I could have a size. <laughs> 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 
calling this for 20. 20? Yeah. 20 kilos. The second snapper <laughs> I've caught on soft plastics. And thank you, my mate. And it's 10 kilos. It's got about. I mean, you know, it's definitely 10 kilos. I'm from Melbourne. Let's get it up, mate. You're going to cut it. I don't want to get it. I don't want to. I'm not winger. It's just a big plate. Give me time. I'm enjoying it. You might say we've got a little bit of mayhem going on here. Triple hookup. Two on soft plastics, one on bait. Warren hooked these up a couple of minutes before the other guys, but it's just got colour now, so we'll... Have a look through. Have a look this. Oh. Well done, winger. I've got colour here on mine as well. Have a look at that, Tanner. On the winger, my flasher on my new Western Port rig. He's angry too. Have a look at the flasher. We've just seen that on Swapo. Hang on, hang on. We've got another one over here. We'll bring them all together. Charlie, give him up, mate. <laughs> oh, baby! Uh, Lovely. Come on. I will come around to Charlie first. Alright. Oh, Alright. Alright. He's going again, he's going again, he's We got three lovely fish. Look at right. this. Unbelievable. Uh, one in. Two. Two in. Come on, little fella. Now this net holds 60 and kilos. We're going to find we're out. Test it out. There we go, eh? Hey. <laughs> that, that is madness. Have a look at that. <laughs> That's a big fish there, Carter. Yeah. There's seven to eight. How good's that, guys? Awesome. <laughs> That's just unbelievable. 25 oh. kilos of snapper. <laughs> what an initiation to soft plastics and for me, salty dog food. Thank you. Well, welcome to the fold. Mate, I'll tell you. That's great. You never look back now, Charlie. No, no, no. That's good. We're thinking big. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The least of the trip, that one. <laughs> Just cruise down. Oh, it's it's going down. Be fine. Put him in. Make sure he's comfortable. Got his bearings. Uh, I think so. Yeah. And another squishy bite to that. I don't care. That's awesome. And how hot was that? That was as much fun as I've ever had with a rod in my hand, a fishing rod. I'm telling you, mate, I've done a lot of fishing in Victoria and South Australia, we all have, and, I, and we've caught a lot of big fish. And although we didn't get any super monsters, that was as good as it gets. Not every day you get three, eight, nine kilo, kilo snapper coming up on soft plastics. Buzz, you're the man. You said you'd get us onto the fish straight away, and you did. You boys did all the work. We uh, were lucky enough to know where the fish are, but uh, it's a pretty big learning curve today. It was uh, pretty special on the plastics. How do you reckon we stack up us because you reckon we, uh, we honorary South Australians yet? Well, uh, if, if I didn't know you Victorians, I probably couldn't tell. So, <laughs> <laughs> you've done pretty well. Oh, that was awesome. Fantastic day on the water. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much. Cheers. Mate, Wanger. appreciate it. Enjoy and I've got a present for you, mate. Now, I know your, your beloved hat. Let's just show the camera this special piece of work. I mean, that is a classic Carlton Blues. 1995. I dare say that's got some sentimental value. Yeah. Mate, I'd like to just present you a Salty Dog Film cap. Cheers, thank you and very the much. Other boys, are, other boys are going to tempt you as well to see if we can get you wearing some different colours. Awesome. And Buzz, thanks for the buzz. I've got a Shimano <laughs> cap for you, mate. Yeah, big decision here. I don't know which one I'm going to put on. I'll, uh, if the cap fits, wear it. Yeah, we'll have to trust you. Well, here we go. I'll have a go. Well, How's it fit? Well done, mate. I look pretty smart. Not too bad, Buzz, but we've, we've left a few squidges <laughs> oh, on board no. for you, mate. Well, this is getting hard now. So, thank you very much. Cheers, I've had Dan a fantastic it. couple of days, mate, and the fish you put us on have been awesome. Enjoyed your company. And it's been great to be able to test the lures here. Yeah. We had a day yesterday where the fish were on song. We didn't need anything with them. Today they weren't quite as 
hot, so we're able to use the S factor. So thank you very much, mate. That was awesome. Fantastic day. Big learning curve for uh, Buzz and the Big Ash. And Big uh, Ash. Let's not forget Big Ash. He's done a fantastic job with the uh, posting uh, story on the internet, and uh, that's worked. The Burley Trail has got the big bear in the trail. <laughs> and, uh, I brought him a 16 hour drive from Melbourne and uh, thanks for coming boys, really really enjoyed your company and I hope you have uh, enjoyed yourselves. Alright, yeah, just slightly.